Probably the single biggest inspiration for all of my orc builds are the orcs from the Beast Arises series. I've always liked orcs, but I absolutely love the massive and brutally cunning orcs from that series that brought the Imperium to its knees in a matter of months. In them, any of the goofiness or comedic relief that lingers in the normal representation of orcs is banished and replaced with horrific Xeno strangeness. While my larger orcs are good representations of mega knobs or war bosses from the Beast Swa, I wanted to try and convert something that was more of a rank and file boy or knob. For that, a normal orc boy simply wasn't going to work as a base, so I instead started with an Age of Sigmar Bulgor. They're big fellas, though in this case I'd already lengthened his waist before I started shooting. They're honestly pretty terrible looking minotaurs, but their roided out muscles and lack of digit to grade legs make them perfect for an orc conversion. I decided to start from the bottom up by replacing his feet with those of a mega knob. Next, I green stuffed on an orc knob head to get a better sense of his pose and character. It looks hilariously tiny on its own, but a jaw plate makes it marginally better. Honestly, when you're making big orcs, there are essentially no good, sustainable options for heads. To be able to fit a breastplate on him later, I shaved off the man boobs of the bulgore. My basic plan for my knob was to armor the front of him and leave the back relatively bare so I wouldn't entirely lose his roided out muscles. It also makes sense that an orc would prioritize armoring his front since he'd never retreat and need it on his back. Once his chest was shaved down, I went back to his legs and started fitting on these L-shaped gun pieces from the Flash Gits kit as power braces to mimic the look of the Mega Knobs. For the thigh braces of both legs, I split Akila Khan's arm and used the piston sections. I added arms to the torso of my knob and dry fitted it in place to see how it looked. What I realized was that because of the added height from his waist, it was looking too narrow now, so I took it off and used this handy line down the spine as a guide to saw it in half. My inspiration for this in terms of how his proportions were supposed to look was this screenshot of an old game called Of Orcs and Men. I love how ridiculously wide and muscled his torso is here. I also sawed my knob's legs and widened them, though not as much as I had his torso so that he would have a hulking V silhouette. I replaced the tabard I cut off with the armor tread from a bulgrin kit and glued a shaved down armor plate above it. This is the front of a Redemptor Dreadnought I expanded with a plastic card sheet. I originally thought it would work well as a breastplate with the little out branches connecting to the leg brace hips, but ultimately it looked too flat and squarish. I tried replacing it with this soldier section from a Death Dread. It too, unfortunately, was a little too large and awkward and fitting his arms on it would have been a pain. I went back to the drawing board and decided to base his breastplate on a flipped over Killican jaw plate. I also added a mechanical bit at the bottom to add some visual interest and make it look less flat, and a pair of spike bands to connect it to his shoulders. It was more complicated than the boxy look I was originally going for, but works well. Moving on to arming him, this is a rifle from a knob's kit, but barely looks like a pistol in my knob's hand, he's so huge. Unfortunately, giving him a bigger gun would require changing his stance, so he'd have to make do with the pea shooter. I'd originally intended to give him a power claw in his other hand, but I dry fitted on one of the original Bulgore's hands and really liked how it looked. The original axe was perfectly serviceable for a fantasy setting, but to bring it into the grim darkness of the 40k universe, I replaced it with a chain axe for the knob kit. It looked good, but a little undersized. I liked this mace for him better, though the wooden haft I'd later make more techy by replacing it with the handle from a Terminator Power Maul. Still not happy with the knob's gun, I decided to try and combine it with this Killican leg to give it a bit more size and weight. It didn't work well, and I ended up just replacing it with a different knob rifle. Both weapons finalized, I used a milli put to sculpt his shoulders. Because the pose of his arms wasn't how they were originally intended, there were all kinds of gaps that needed filling and smoothing over. I also used green stuff to make him a tabard for his back. I'd taken off the shoulder spikes to sculpt his shoulders and honestly liked him more without them. There's two main reasons. The first is that curved spikes like those always kind of look like luau palm fronds to me. And the second is that I wanted to preserve as much as possible the massive shoulder traps which give him a hulking and powerful silhouette. With the shoulder spikes gone though, he still needed something to hold his chest plate up. So I snipped the chains from Aluda's harness and anchored them on his shoulders. I'm not the best with green stuff and didn't want to cover up his muscles with a meh looking harness, so we'll just assume the chains are attached to his skeleton or something. And with that, my beast orc was done. In all, he stands around 12 or 15 feet in height, twice the height of a normal human and only a touch shorter than a death dread. I'll be making another pair of beast orcs soon, so subscribe if you're interested in those and don't forget to like this video. Thanks for watching.